We've been playing you clips all morning of the world's worst orchestra. It's all right, they say that about themselves. It's a self-declaration. The cultural phenomena from the 70s, who last performed together publicly in 1979, go by the name of the Portsmouth Symphonia, but we've heard rumours they could be reforming. Who wouldn't want to go and see these guys? On the line to tell us if it's true is only their manager, Martin Lewis, live from Los Angeles. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Chris. Thank you very much for playing. I've been listening online. Sounds fantastic. My goodness me. Well, the Portsmouth Symphonia hasn't played, as you say, for 30 years, and it makes it a, a very easy job for a manager. I mean, you just, another 10 years go by, there's nothing much to do. But there is so much appreciation. A lot of people go to the Portsmouth Symphonia website, which is just PortsmouthSymphonia.com, and sign up to know when their albums are finally going to be available on CD or digitally. And we're planning to do that. We hope to do that next year. And we think there'll be a great interest, because if you thought they were bad when you heard them mono in vinyl, Wait till you hear them remastered digitally. They're far worse. I can't wait myself, to be honest. Now, there is talk you reform, and how about, you know, every Friday here we have, um, you know, Friday night is music night, and we, we have some fantastic performers on. How about you do a special one-off live, BBC Radio 2, Friday night is music night from the Albert Hall, all proceeds the children need. Get the guys back together for that. Come on, my friend. I think it's something we could certainly plan on doing uh, at the same time with this talk of there being a film TV documentary and bringing out all the CDs and I think to have a big concert would be a great idea but only on one condition Chris I hear you play the violin really badly <laughs> Yes uh, am I in yep, If you play badly we'll have you <laughs> Now of course in this orchestra if you've read about the phenomena that is the Portsmouth Symphony which I have and I've heard about uh, you for a while now um there are some very famous musicians that have come out of this band of brothers and sisters. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, uh, for example, some of them are uh, people like the film composer Michael Nyman. He did the music for the Draftsman's Contract and the piano. Um, Clive Langer, who was the guy that produced Elvis Costello and Teardrop Explodes and Madness, uh, uh, was one of the people. And, of course, Brian Eno, originally in Roxy Music and later uh, a performer and a great producer for U2 and so many other artists. So, yes, some, some great musicians have come out of it. Despite the Portsmouth Symphony, they've gone on to be successful. And the rules were that you just you weren't allowed to play an instrument you were able to play is that right it, well, it, what it really was, I mean, one thing, there is a misnomer, because sometimes we joke about it, nobody plays badly on purpose. That wouldn't be funny. That would be kind of like an <laughs> obvious joke. Everybody is genuinely trying their best, but the trouble is we embraced the entire range of musical competence. So there were some people who actually were of symphony orchestra standards, but there were other people who didn't know which end of the violin to blow. Right. And um, a lot of people in between. And, and if somebody was particularly good, we would say, look, you're rather good on that cello, why not try the oboe instead? <laughs> and and it, you know, from that mixture, I think. But one of the, but it really was important that we didn't try. You know, it, would be, it wouldn't be a very. Good, it's like winking to the camera if you just say, "Oh, isn't this funny?" So everyone was doing their best, and it just simply we weren't very good. And you did really sell out the Albert Hall once, didn't you? We did. Well, but, well. Uh, to be honest, there was a sellout at the beginning. It wasn't entirely full at the very end of the concert, but that was because some people who didn't really know what they were going to get, a lot of the audience knew who the Symphonia were by then, but some people came along and just thought, oh, that looks good, Beethoven's Fifth, uh, Air on a G-String, we'll go and see that. And they were a little surprised, I think. And like all great um, recitals at... The, uh, at the Albert Hall, you finish with your own version of the Hallelujah Chorus, and I believe the choir couldn't sing either. Well, yes, but it's, it's one thing for one person not to sing. I mean, when I'm in the shower singing, it's bad. But when you have 350 people who can't sing, it has a sort of quite a good quality to it. Yeah, OK, I think I've got that somewhere. Hang on a minute, we've got that here. We're going to sign off with this. Thanks for talking to us, Martin. It's been a joy. Great pleasure. I hope to catch up with you next year. OK, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.